camera work. Sorry. To come oh, it's all good. It's all good. One thing I didn't realize until I did my little show match with Sylvia earlier is that those tablets, you can track law. Yes. And it automatically does it on the screen, which is how we keep up to date. So if I play you in a showcase game, I can just go to 20 and win. Pretty much. Okay, cool. I well, feel right. pretty confident now. Perfect. Last time we played, that's, as, that's what it felt like. <laughs> they are in their uh, mulligan stage. Fabian going to be sending just one card. Oh, no, he's keeping one card. Keeping okay. One. Mulliganing six. Yeah, that's a very strong mulligan. Lagoon so far, Fabian obviously wasn't able to find what he needed and on Thomas's side of the field I'm seeing a steel song weighing up what they I don't think they've done their mulligan back uh, not quite yet and it may be a sign that Fabian is going first that he mulligan first because that is the way it's meant to go whoever's Indeed. going first is meant to mulligan first so that the turn two player can use that information to inform their own mulligan which is really important I think it's, well, I'm going to give credit to Joe who has reminded me of what an important interaction that is because if they only throw back one card then maybe you know that you can't be so greedy in your own mulligan but if they throw back a whole seven or something then maybe you can be a little greedier but certainly something that little kind of players should take into consideration absolutely mulliganing is a really underrated skill in Lorcana knowing you know and, and by this point it's probably not a blind mulligan these players are both near the top tables they probably have seen each other playing so far possibly what do you need it looks like we're going to develop our brain grab the best card we want from the top two cards of the deck yeah so it looks like we've got ruby sapphire here the lesser played sapphire variant at least recently yeah for sure but that develop your brain I'm a big fan of just hockety pockety look at the top two for, uh, cards of your deck pick one to go into your hand just nice bit of search we ink to the fishbone quill maybe that's a sign that he's holding another or it may be a sign that he wants to go a mickey root or something like that but our steel song player utilizing i think is that ursula vanessa i'm seeing there no, it's Cinderella Borum Sensation. I think, uh, oh, yeah, yeah I, there was a Vanessa, I thought so. Yeah, that's going to go into the inkwell, and this Borum Sensation Cinderella, a great turn one drop because it is immediately uh, threatening a let the storm rage on, a strength for a raging fire, or even a bare necessities. Yeah, it's a one cost card that can sing a free cost card. That is a whim. Oh. We see a second ink for Fabian, but that is it. That is the entire turn, and we are already back over to Thomas here. So, not the best start from oh. Fabian, but we know these sapphire decks can do this if you can get the end game it's not the end of the world we see cinderella inked and out comes our old friend mr smee mr smee but potentially the best statted two drop in the game so incredibly strong three three quests for two and the ability isn't even that bad sometimes it can even be a help like to do self damage if you combine it with cards like bell or rapunzel but even if you are self damaging it's very rarely the end of the world so yes smee an incredible character but fabian cannot be happy with their previous turn as you say you are right they can catch up but i'm sure he would have loved a one jump ahead or something but didn't happen instead we're opting for the turn three inking a maleficent monstrous dragon we play the fishbone quill and we're going to exert it to ink something else Shh, secretly of course you don't want to show it's, it's, it's a secret it is a secret and of course because it's a secret it can be an uninkable card Even better there are ways like mickey and fishbone quill that will allow you to ink those otherwise uninkable cards there is also the ink caster card which joe keeps trying to convince us is good <laughs> uh the, the jury is out on that one yeah i mean i'm not gonna lie when i first saw uh, emerald ink the hidden ink caster i wasn't the biggest fan of oh the potential is off the charts no, oh i agree I, I agree but joe says the time is now no one's made it work yet. We do see Robin Hood come down with a second Ursula here. So that is going to give a bunch of options as we see a couple quests as well. Get Thomas up to four law. And what can Fabian do in response? So, okay, going a little bit behind, but you cannot let your opponent build a big board and a bunch of law. You do not have infinite time to stay in the game. No, not at all. And of course, Fabian is getting closer and closer to that be prepared turn. But if Thomas can get a do I have another safe questing turn and get up to eight then I think that's pretty reasonable and again be prepared one of the strongest cards in the game but it can be slow if you're just playing that and your opponent's got a full hand to go okay I'll just extend again so we'll see um, Thomas is currently holding a, a long came Zeus uh, a two drop that I can't see but he is holding that whole new 
world. Yeah, which gives you a whole new hand of cards. Does to your opponent as well, which could be good or bad, depending on where your opponent is at any one time. So it does look like we've got a play coming. What's the iron up? It is going to be let the storm rage on. Deal two damage, draw a card. Yeah, and the only opposing target, that Grand Martala, who has basically already fulfilled her main purpose on play. She looks at the top two cards of the deck. One goes into your hand and one to the bottom. But she is also very useful for singing four cost songs which this deck might be running the likes of how far i'll go um maybe even a beat king undisputed that's not commonly in the red blue decks or the ruby sapphire decks but it's certainly an option but not anymore because it's been removed a <laughs> little bit of a shame but what can you do yeah, like i said she's filled a purpose and the ice blocks on the board as well which can lower strength of characters really nice for adjusting the math for challenges or to get characters into range of medusa brawl and sisu exactly right we do just see a questing party from Thomas here going up to seven law and basically just going look Fabin you've not developed much of a board yet so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to play a bunch of characters I'm going to quest and that piglet's questing for free next turn I do love me a nice piglet yeah the poo pirate captain puts on an unbelievable amount of pressure and there, there is seven law now sitting on that board so the pressure is on Fabian he's going to exert the fishbone quill to hidden ink and then we're going to put down Flavisham that artificer ability remove an item which is going to be the fishbone quill and draw two cards keeping the ice block obviously favoring that or especially with a couple of brawls in hand that's definitely going to be valuable it is absolutely here comes brawl getting rid of piglet poo pirate captain no surprise that one could not no. be left on the board yeah you're right and i imagine this second brawl would like i'm sure he would love to see this robin hood shift and then he can reduce his strength by one with the ice block and then potentially brawl that but thomas is even isn't even holding a robin hood at the moment does have that whole new world along came zeus and a mystery card that i can't is it two whole new worlds yes look there are two whole, no i can confirm i caught a look at that gotcha. a second ago gotcha. it is two whole new worlds no and singer. along came zeus but no singer for it no singer but yeah it's awkward there comes along came zeus it's gonna deal five damage and this is what you've been beating the drum for this and i agree we are six willpower is ridiculous on here and Blavisham. did you know ross that six is a high number in lorcana it's a pretty high number and yep still isn't removed again if you're facing Ru ruby have plenty of answers for this no other color can immediately answer that except that of challenges i mean um there probably are unique cards here and there but they're not really played so this flavisham tough to remove we're gonna put that uh, we're gonna quest up another damage goes on to the smee bumbling mate yeah, Smee Bumbling Mate is a great card that I absolutely adore. It's got a great stat line, quest for two. It's only a two cost. What's the downside? If you don't have a captain in play, you have to take a damage at the end of your turn, but it is absolutely worth it here. Does look like the ice block is being used so that Hiram Flavisham can draw. Is that what we're doing? Yep, it seems to be that. Okay, here we go. Here comes the draw. It, it, it took a minute to draw the cards. I started second-guessing myself. Yep, no, no, I think you're, you're, you're absolutely right. That's what Flavisham doing and yeah i mean thomas has got a nice board here a couple of whole new worlds but again you got to think he wants to sing that with a character doesn't really want to pay for it the hard way and we're going to see for the first time in today at least for me be prepared and I was prepared. I took my headphones off last time because I learned in Bochum I can't keep my headphones on when you do that. Hey, my Italian counterparts are now doing it. We'll duet it later. Um, I'm not sorry. So here we go. We're seeing uh, a couple of whole new worlds. Yeah, just revealing to their opponent what they discarded, which I think is very good manners when you play a whole new world. Absolutely. Like, just, just show them. Like, don't make me have to say can i look at your discard and go through because it is of course open information so just make that clear as quickly as possible i, I like to figure as tcg sportsmanship looks like we've got a couple of harps drawn from thomas here this is a card i struggle to get my head around a little bit because if you don't sing every turn you lose them yes and they've got a great stat line but if you don't sing you lose them yeah and I just, I, I, it's not a card I think I'm ever going to put into a deck, but enough good players are making it work that I think I might be in the wrong here. We yep. did see it develop your brain, 
game. And quietly, Thomas is on 12 law. Fabian's only on one. It is time to start using those tricks like Tamatoa. So incredibly shiny. You're going to find something shiny from the discard and add it back to... Did we, Was there something in this? There must have been because he's, removed, he's been banishing items with Flavish. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he got back, I think he got back the ice block. So, yep, Tamatoa putting in the business right here. Yeah, Tamatoa coming in, using those shiny things, catching those fish. Mmm, fish dinners, one could say. <laughs> okay, you get a point for the pun contest going. Do you know on Twitter they're having pun contests? Between I have masters. seen that there is a pun contest going <laughs> over on Twitter. I, I, I only just remember, I just do puns anyway because I think I'm funny. But yeah, it's, it's now a competition apparently, so game on. Just to talk about this heart for a moment, Orlando. While I agree with you, my first first assessment of this golden harp was you have to sing a song every turn this doesn't seem good but think of it in this respect it is an inkable daisy without that but the negative ability as long as you can sing songs it has the two it is one cost it has that four willpower which is really tough to get over in the early stages of the game so yeah as long as you are consistently singing songs then this harp can put in a lot of work again like you i wasn't a big believer but a lot of very good players have said no this harp puts in work and it's done very well for, for Thomas so far. I mean, it's uh, like I say, I've, I'm pouring over deck lists like I'm maybe not quite to the level you are, but to a pretty good level. Of course. And Necessity's coming down here to get rid of a non character card. And I'll tell you, a couple of weeks ago when I was looking, I'm not seeing much harp. But, you know, last week when I was looking in advance of this event, I'm seeing a lot more harp. Yeah. That is a card that really sits Bockham. And it is the Rise of Steel Song as an archetype, mm. which has really, which over the past couple of weeks has been accelerating, has led to harp seeing a lot more play. And it looks like Brawl. Yeah. Yes, he's going awesome to force Fabian to forget about his worries and his brawl. Doesn't want that coming down. Again, this uh, Steel Song deck has a lot of very valuable characters of two strength, uh, stuff like Ariel uh, and a lot of your singers. And again, especially combined with the ice block that Thomas knows Fabian is playing, can be an important piece. Absolutely, it can. So we do see another card coming down here. It is let it go. Is that no? Let the storm rage on. Deal two damage to Tamatoa while drawing a card. And if you think the six willpower from here on Flavisham is annoying to get over, Tamatoa has eight. Yeah, he is a big, big crab. Is the reason a lot of um, Sapphire decks will include things like Let It Go or Hades, just because that's such a lot of willpower to get over. So It is, yeah. and it's interesting to note that Maui, you know, the widely played Maui hero to all, cannot beat Tamatoa. I mean, she can't expect a demigod to be a decapod, can you? <laughs> Look it up. Yeah, I will. I will. I will. I did, actually, at the time when I first saw this film. So. Oh, I'm proud to say I already knew the word decapod. I, I guessed based on the context <laughs> of the song I guessed but I, he told me to look it up I don't know what, I don't know what you want me to say I, yeah. I do what I'm told we are going to quest with that Tamatoa only for one because there are no items on the board but on quest Fabian will be able to pick an item to put back into his hand we are going to go with that fishbone quill maybe he just wants to remove it with Flavisham or maybe he is interested in going up to a higher ink count again these uh, ruby sapphire debts can utilize the lucky dime so nice high uh, ink count can be good oh blimey we're seeing a double one, double one jump two jumps ahead <laughs> two jumps ahead not quite the triple jump but not far off and here's the thing with fabian right oh, that b prepared has worked fabian i was not loving this game for fabian for right up until the b prepared yep. was not working thomas was getting cheeky lord left right and center a little bit of questing a little bit of this a little bit of that and ever since that b prepared fabian has bought time we've now got tamatoa down we've got madame medusa fabian really needs to go couple of items lucky dime there needs to be a big turn you bought time now you need to have that big swing turn yeah i agree and thomas is in this position where he has some cards in his hand he has a golden harp a couple of strength for raging fire robbie he could redevelop a like a semi-wide board but you always have to be respectful of the be prepared so thomas needs to watch how much he's extending here because another free prepared from fabian could leave thomas with absolutely nothing so potentially not wanting to be too greedy also needs to of course be wary of the madame medusas and madame medusas take out a 
lot of things in the Steel Song deck. There's not a lot of characters that can survive her. No, we were talking about this in the previous game when they had Flynn Rider. There's fewer characters in the deck because you're playing so many songs, and they tend to be a little bit weaker, which does open up, you know, plays for other decks. And when you've got bigger characters, it's like something like Tamatoa. It's so hard to get rid of Tamatoa generally, as, you know, we see Fabian developing his brain here. And this is where we need the swing. Tamatoa is great when you've got items. There's no items down at the moment. We yep. need something a little bit more, frankly. Yeah, Fabian wants to start chaining some Porpticles and, uh, um, well, Porpticles, really, so they can build up the strength of that, uh, the law of that Tamatoa. Words are hard. But there is, a, there, there is a way he can still get there. But as you say, Fabian... There's the lucky dime. Fabian needs to capitalize on this. Would be, uh, nice block. Be prepared tempo he's gained. Yeah, the items are growing. That's six law right there. That's not bad. Three for Tamatoa quest. I have challenging. And then three... No, questing. I was right the first time. And then three for Lucky Dime copying Tamatoa. And then you get Lady Tremaine as well. So that's a seven law turn, potentially. Oh, and a be prepared as well. But it doesn't get rid of the items. I'm a little sad it gets rid of Tamatoa, quite frankly. But you know what? You get your ice block. You get your lucky dime. If Fabian has another Tamatoa, this is where the game can start getting out of hand. Yeah, so just I want to talk through that play for a moment because that be prepared there obviously took out a lot of Fabian's own board, but he has to respect the fact that Thomas was on one law. The Golden Harp was questing for two. Um, the Lawrence was questing for two, taking him up to 16. So I get the fort trail, absolutely. Like, it may seem a bit counterproductive, to get rid of your own board that much, but I just think Fabian isn't comfortable letting Thomas get to that law mount. And again, Fabian has a hand here of double Tamatoa and Sisu. So yeah, I could, I think some people may have questioned that be prepared, but I do respect it. It keeps Thomas's law a little bit, sorry, um, yeah, Thomas's law a little bit more in check. It does, and they see Tamatoa getting re-established here, so that can be free law with the Lucky Dime. You do not have to wait a turn to copy Tamatoa with Lucky Dime just to actually quest with Tamatoa itself. Yeah, such a powerful card, and we saw Thomas's turn. He got down that Cinderella Stout-Hearted. Super, would have been super happy to get that down after the Be Prepared, and this Stout-Hearted is so strong. 5-5 five, five, quest for three, resist uh, two, and the Singing Sword. If you sing a song, you can challenge a ready character and yes yeah, so that Tamatoa isn't going to be able to one shot that Cinderella she won't be able to be um, Medusa Tremaine could be an option or Bee King but there are other characters on the board so I think short of a bee pre uh, another bee prepared then that Cinderella sticking around for a while and I was not sticking around for a while this game is not going to be going on for too much longer because Thomas has got four law to win the game now we do see Sisu coming down and at least taking game off the board mm -hmm. Thomas can quest for free next turn with 16 law already established. What a and jump. A huge jump. And here's the thing. Can't get rid of that Cinderella yet. Now we do see Fabian going up to 15 law and with... Yes, he got game on the board as well. All yep. you need is Lucky Dime Sisu. And I think we might be... Is this a yep. concession yep. from Thomas? Yep. That's oh, game. the combination of Sisu and Lucky Dime is wow. too much. Although I like to think the Lucky Dime is going to be used for Tamatoa anyway. Yeah, I mean, if, if that makes you feel better. But it does. <laughs> at least Tamatoa was on the board when he got the dub. But yeah, that game changed an awful lot. Our Steel Song player looked like they were in pretty good control early on. Really nice um, early tempo build. But that B prepared from that first be prepared from Fabian gave him a little bit of time to build his board the second one again some people may have questioned it but I respect it keeping Thomas at bay and then just lucky dime able to take us the rest of the way with those big characters yeah playing that lucky dime and then playing the be prepared the first time round that that was it that was the game that was the point where it turned for Fabian to the point where he was going to win that game and it's, it's why these sapphire decks make me so incredibly nervous mm. because you sit there and you go well well, okay, here's the thing. You're going to be losing for several turns, yeah. but hopefully it'll work out in the end. Now, we need to talk about the fact both of these players are on 34 points. Now, Thomas, at this point, can only get three. Yeah. 
even with seven points next round, that's 44, that is risky, it might not be enough. Fabian here, if he's able to get four points from this winning the next game, yep. you go up to 41, yep. and then you've got a chance with 1-1 one, one to get in at 44, which is awkward, but it means that a 2-0 victory next round will put you on 48, that is, I would be stunned if that was If that didn't, enough. yeah, 48 should be enough to secure that day two spot, so the tension is on now. Uh, Thomas probably a little bit frustrated to know that um, he may have already been doing that maths in his head. Then again, he might not. He just be, might be fully focused on this game here and now. But yep, um, Fabian certainly will be aware that a 2-0 here could be exactly what he needs to make that day two. Yeah, and when you win game one, there's that, you know what, this second game is worth four points. Yep. As soon as you win game one, game two becomes so much more important. This isn't the best of three. Oh, no. This is a two-game format. And in a two-game format, your first win's worth three points. That's nice. Second win's worth four. That's bootyful. Yeah, that bonus point makes a huge difference across uh, a nine rounds of Swiss playing Lucana. So, yeah, a big factor. To it being, going to um, 2 owing someone is certainly rewarded. But we're just coming to the end of our mulligan. I'm trying to work out if Thomas is... I think he's throwing away five even keeping two that's why i would read that board there they're going to do a cut we're about to find out i think you might be yeah so drew five extra ones here yeah. we kept mr smee and is that bare necessities it may well be definitely kept mr smee the two left yeah, that's a bad, yeah it's a bare necessities yeah, yeah. So it's, all, it's always really interesting to me to see which cards the players really want here. Mm -hmm. Of course, bare necessities, we've seen some of those cards from Fabian, like Brawl, being a huge problem. Yeah, and Fishbone Quill is really nice to snipe early. Yes. So, yeah, I, I like that choice against the Ruby Sapphire player. But, yeah, we started off with an ink. The Ballroom Sensation Cinderella, or as always, um, threatening certain plays. That Singer 3 and passing over to Fabian. And let's remember that last game, Fabian had, a, I say, a passive turn two. He didn't do anything. <laughs> so hopefully, hoping for a better play this time. But, oh, what's happened there? Did he... Oh, okay. For a minute, oh. I thought he passed, and I was like, no, surely you can ink. But, yep, down comes the Tamatoa. One jump ahead of the bread line, one swing ahead of the ink. And you're up to three, and that's the thing about Sapphire, and it, it's one of the reasons I don't like playing it myself, these, these style of decks anyway. Uh -huh. It takes a few turns to get rolling, but don't worry, it'll be worth it. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what we're seeing here from Fabian. It's, you know, you've had two turns, you've got free ink, but Thomas is kind of taking advantage. That Mr. Smee as a turn two play is great. We've got Ariel as a turn three play. Uh -huh. Goes and gets strength of a raging fire, and if Thomas can build up a bit of a ball the characters here that could get turned into a vet. We saw a strength for Raging Fire for seven earlier. Oh, yeah, that was... I think that may have been the biggest strength of the uh, Raging Fire I've ever seen. It was... The biggest one I've seen. It was, as, it was as mysterious as the dark side of the moon, Ross. That's what it was right there. We're going to quest up with our Cinderella Borum Sensation and our Mr. Smee. Mr. Mr. Quest. M M Mr. Quest a lot. Well, to be fair, the, stat, the, the strength and willpower is just as impressive. That aerial spectacular singer obviously came down this turn, so won't be able to do anything, but it's threatening a whole new world. Um, on, the, on, a, on a subsequent turn. So, yeah, Ariel has been one of the best cards in the game since Chapter 1. And Fabian respecting it, going to ink that Maleficent Monstrous Dragon and going to have a little brawl with Ariel in the Snuggly Duckling. Yeah, not too bad at all because that aerial, you know, it's a free, it's a free cost singer five. You don't want act, you don't want your opponent to have access to those songs that early and that easily. But now we got another one coming down, which not only can sing those songs but can search one of them out as well. Yep, a touch of deja vu for Fabian as Thomas plays yet another spectacular oh, but singer. Oh, a whiff! A whiff. It does happen occasionally. We're not sure how many songs Thomas is playing. Uh, tip, sixteen to twenty is generally the count. I've some seem, I've seen some players go over and under, but in my experience with decklist, it's 16 to 20. We're going to ink that strength for a raging fire that we found on the previous turn. Down comes Robin Hood and questing up for three with Cinderella and Smee. And you just see Thomas has just been completely free to just quest every turn. Fabian is yet to build any sort of uh, board presence. And this is what's nervous about these Sapphire decks, because you take that time to build, and if your opponent can get a fast start, and, you know, I think that's one of the reasons why you have to keep Mr. Smee from your mulligan, you're thinking, I'm going to be questing from turn two for two lore, or turn two for three. For but sure. Maui coming down, taking out the Cinderella, only taking one damage back. 
it is very much Maui time. Yeah, Fabian uh, would have been very pleased to have that Maui, and I'm sure Maui said, you're welcome, as he takes out the Borum Sensation Cinderella, removing one of those threats from the board, and of course, only taking one damage in return. So this Maui is set to put in some work on this field, unless Thomas can remove it, courtesy of um, if he could put down another character and sink strength for a Raging Fire, something like that. But this Maui... It's going to be hard to remove without Thomas clearing his own board at the moment. Yeah, unfortunately, that Maui is very big, very... Um, reckless. Yeah, I'm reckless is a good word. Now, if Mr. Smee were to quest this turn, would actually banish itself. But look, if you can quest with Mr. Smee three times and get six lore from your two-cost character, oh, you do not mind the self-banishment. That is a very good payoff, absolutely. Ooh, and here is a way that he can get rid of that Maui in one turn with a long came Zeus. One god going after another with his Thunderbolt. Yeah, ni nice, nice play. I did miss the Zeus on my previous a statement and we do see now that Thomas is on 11 law Fabian last time was able to play a be prepared at around this time of the game to really start bringing it back can he do much more we've got how far I'll go which does get an extra card and an extra ink so sitting at six oh we're up to seven ink but there's no card to play with the seven ink I want to see Fabian's hand in a minute because I don't think Fabian's got much going on there at all he is holding two be prepared one lucky dime and a maleficent monstrous dragon which well is, I said I wanted to see there the you hand. go ask and you shall receive the bare necessities coming through showing that uh not great hand not for this point in the game anyway we have four five six seven ink it might be eight it's seven or eight so this b prep is online so thing is just an aerial and a robin hood does not sound like the most high value be prepared i've ever heard of but you're gonna reach a point where fabian has no choice no, I mean, we've got Thomas on 14 law. Fabian yet to get off the board. One game one. Here is that be prepared, as you suggested, getting rid of two cards. And it, it's really not what you're looking for, but it's the best play you've got available at the moment. Maleficent wouldn't do anything because you don't have nine ink yet. At least it could, like, Thomas had no hand. So, like, even though that wasn't the most impactful be prepared, it has removed all of Thomas's options from the board. And now just playing off the top of his deck, that's uh, Cinderella Borum Sensation. And allowing Fabian to pray down the Tamatoa. And is this the point, Ross, where Fabian is going to start to build momentum? We know that he's holding a lucky dime in his hand. If Thomas can have a couple of uh, very passive subpar turns where he isn't able to do much, then Fabian can really start to take advantage here. He's got a lot of catching up to do, but it can be done. He's got a bunch of ink to do it. And what you basically have to do is counter every turn. Thomas still needs six ink, which is a lot when you're just top decking and playing one card a turn. Oh, but that is not the card you want your opponent to get. That Robin Hood is really difficult to get off the board for a lot of decks around here. Now, you can take out the Cinderella easy with Tamatoa. That's not a problem. But now you've got Robin Hood questing for two, but Maleficent will do it very nicely indeed. And this is where I think Fabian can start making a comeback. Yeah. But he still doesn't have any law. You've got to start getting some law. Yeah, it's taken him a while to get onto the board, but that Maleficent Monstrous Dragon, a perfect play right there with that Dragon Fire ability immediately banishing a chosen character and all Thomas can follow up with is a piglet and you got to think even if he was topping songs at least he'd be exerting the flute every turn and like maybe could still win the race that turn but no we saw um, the previous turn it was just a Cinderella Borum sensation now just a piglet not what Thomas wants to see this is the chance Fabian needs it really is. You get up to three law there. Lucky diamonds. I was going to say, it needs to be more than that. We're up to six law because you've got Maleficent. You've got Lucky Dime. You've got Tamatoa. Two for each of them. Now we see Ursula coming down. There's not... Oh, now with one more character, Thomas could get... Does Piglet go for free? Yeah, it would, but the thing is, Thomas put down the Ursula and then just quested with the Piglet for one, which I, I think I can understand the Fort Trail because he's so close to game, especially if Ursula can quest next turn, then he, he just wants to get there as quick as possible. He's got a flute on the board, so I respect the idea of questing with the, uh, with the Piglet there, especially if he's worried that Fabian's going to have a Medusa or a Brawl, which is what comes down. So, yeah, I can understand some people might have questioned that and said, why are you questing? Why don't you just wait until next turn and play another character? 
character. There's no guarantee he's going to get another character. And again, he's so close to game and he reads that Fabian has so many answers to the piglet. So, yeah, I respect the choice to quest there just for one. Fabian's going to win this game. It's looking that way. Because Fabian it? just got eight lore. The way yeah. it works out, Tamato is now questing for three. Maleficent quests for two. Lucky Dime copies Tamato are questing for three because of the two items. Yep. Three plus three plus two is eight. That's and it. it looks like Fabian is oh. actually going to take an improbable 2-0 victory, showing us why this Sapphire deck, I mean, the two-part thing, 